Well, hello guys, my name is David, and today I'll be teaching you how to set up, set up blueprints, like the one you see here of the hands of Jet, and crop them so that you can prepare them for your 3D application. And what we'll be doing is we'll be cropping the different orthographic views, such as the front, um, side, and top. And we will be color correcting and erasing any of the intersecting uh, views. And I will show you how to set up these views in your 3D application as well, so that you can model easily and um, finish your your product. All right, so let's open up our blueprint. So you can get blueprints from the blueprints.com. I'll provide a link for you guys and once you have found your blueprints make sure it's um the, the dimensions are are nice and big um you want to go to image mode and make sure it's set to rgb color all right now what we're going to do is we're going to crop every orthographic view now you may have more orthographic views or less than what I have, but basically it's simple. Just take your rectangular marquee tool and roughly mask around all your different views. We'll be adjusting them later. So draw a mask, go to Edit, Copy, File, New, and since this is the inside view, I'll just rename this to Side. And you, you don't need to adjust the width or height because Photoshop already knows the width and height of this image. So just click on OK and go to Edit, Paste. So now we've got our uh, side view in here. We want to do this for all our views. So now, as you can see, we've got from this blueprint, we already have these images um, cropped roughly. So let's close out of this Photoshop document because we don't need it, and let's not save it. Now I'll be showing you how to uh, actually crop these images so that your view will fit perfectly inside the document. Alright, so let's go to the side view. So right now, we want to draw, draw a rough mask. Before we actually start, let's zoom in. and then go to select transform selection and now we'll get these points so what I'm going to do is move them so as you can see when I move this it will match right here to the view and let's go here I'll just move this down there you go it matches perfectly um, go to the bottom and match it to I guess the wheel right there. That's that's pretty good. And do the exactly the same thing here. And now this is looking quite good. So let's just click this check mark to apply this and fit this to the screen. All right, now we've got this mask around our view. Let's crop this. So let's go to image, crop, and um, go to your mask tool, right click, deselect. Now this is done. Let's go. Now you want to do the same thing for all your orthographic views, such as your top and your front. Alright, so let's say you're working on a view, however, you've got text in the view, or you've got your other orthographic views interfering with the image you're currently working on. The way to solve this is simply use the Photoshop tools. So since I have a white background, I could just use the eraser tool. Eraser tool. 
dramatically increase the size. And basically we'll just clean away the text, like so. And that's a simple way to clean this problem. So now you've got a clean background. And you can work uh, and crop. Now let's say um, maybe your blueprint came in a different color. You can use the maybe the clone stamp tool and uh, clean the background. Alright, so now I very roughly um, cropped all the views, as you can see. Um, you want to make sure you do this as accurate as possible, so that your modeling, when you're modeling in your 3D application, uh, it would be very easy to match up each view with your model. Alright, so now what we will be doing is we'll be fixing the image size for all the views. So let's go to image, image size. Basically, you want to be looking at the document size. Make sure you bring up Notepad and you want to record these um, results. What we'll be doing is we will be basically the width of the side view, which is from this point to that point, will have to match with the height of the top view. So that's why it's important to record this information. So I'm going to type side um, side equals uh, 19764 and parentheses w for width and height is 5.861 height so now we've got this information recorded in our word processing application let's just click OK let's go to the top view and you can clearly see how the width should be in that with the height. Let's go to image, image size or all control Y. Now the height should be very very close to the side or sorry to the width of, of the side view. So actually right now it's exactly the same which is perfect. So we don't need to change anything at all. It's really important to make sure you check country and proportions. So basically when you are matching your side to your top view or your top to your side view, make sure it's adjusted proportionally. So you'll type your value in 19.764 and the width will be adjusted proportionally. Now hit OK. Now it'll be kind of different for the front view. Now, again, you have to write these values in Notepad. So, right, so I wrote these in the document. So at the top, I've got the dimensions and the side. And now, hit OK. Go to your front view. That will be kind of different. So if you go to image, image size, basically what you want is we want to take the closest values to the width and height. So if we look here, what's closest to 16.861? Well, it's um, the top view, the width, 16.542. So you want to copy this and paste it. Now we don't want to for this to be adjusted proportionally, so we'll uncheck country and proportions. And we'll paste that in there. Now the height, well, what's closest to the height? You'll go in here, and the height is 5.389, so the side height is the closest, so we'll copy that and paste it, and hit OK. Now if you have a bottom view, you'll do exactly the same thing as you did in the top view. If you have a back view, you'll do the same thing as you did in the front view. 
this is basically to make sure that the image size is as close as possible in all your orthog orthographic views. Alright, so the last step to finish off with Photoshop is to color correct them. Alright, now, if you search Blueprint in um, Google Images, you'll notice that usually the background color is blue and the wireframe is white. Basically, this is much easier to see when you are modeling, when you're modeling um, from what you have in your blueprints. So to do this, we'll go to Image, Adjustments, Hue, Saturation, or Control U. We want to make sure it's colorized. Make sure you want the hue to be blue. So you want this to be maybe 240, right in the middle, in the center. And the line is, we want to go to a negative value because we go positive, it will be flipped. The foreground would be blue, not the background. So let's go here. Now you, you don't want this to be you know, too blue. I would suggest maybe something like this. Maybe negative 55 should do, or 50. It doesn't have to be too intense. And to speed up your workflow, you can go to this button right here and save the preset. And just call it Blueprint. Save, and hit OK. Now, to do this faster on all your other views, just press Control U, load preset, select the blueprint, load, and you got it in here. So do the exactly the same thing for all the views. So load preset, blueprint, and now as, as you can see, since we erased text in this view, it's blue. Um, the way I fixed it is to go in here, go to the clone stamp tool maybe, and um, what, what you want to do is basically just alt click on the background and just color this in. And make sure the hardness is 100%. And just color this in here. Now you may use other techniques, and that's, that's fine. But this is a technique I use. I just fix that. Once you're done, we now have all our views cropped, color corrected, and uh, adjusted so that all the image size is matched. Now we will go to File, Save As. And you want to save these documents. And the format I would use is Photoshop. Uh, just if you want to maybe change something, you could open this up in Photoshop. And um, usually 3D applications would accept Photoshop like 3D Studio Max. Now you could obviously use JPEG or um, PNG, but I'll stick with a Photoshop document. So save all your views out into your folder and we'll jump right into your 3D application.